Okay, ladies and gents, I'd like to make a video about the art of fixed camera angles in video games, or specifically in survival horror games. I think fixed camera angles have become less nowadays. They are a very big missed opportunity. And nowadays we're seeing more and more first person runaway games. All these old survival horror games from the PlayStation 2, GameCube, PlayStation 1, even more consoles from the past utilize this the fixed camera perspective which is as you can see the character here, Jill, is moving around and the camera is placed from a distance away, pointing in one direction, and you can see the characters moving about. I can't control the camera myself, however. So in this video, I want to discuss the art of telling a story in a game using fixed camera angles. I think you'd better take a look at this. Even it? in this cutscene, the camera stays perfectly still, as you can see. Line. It's not moving about in a, in a cinematic Jill. style. It's static and still. Find any other clues. And I'll I think there's a hidden this. art in this presentation like of storytelling in video games. And in my opinion, for survival horror games, I think these fixed camera angles are actually better than first person and third person. And I'll explain why. Firstly, in this shot, what comes to mind is you see, you see the candles there in the middle, and you see the chandelier at the top. But as I move my character, you can see the shadow move across the wall. It looks very creepy, if you ask me. And also, the table itself is quite long and the camera is placed to give the impression that the table here is actually longer than it is and it's all because of the camera is placed in this location also you can see a picture there to the right of the screen so you can draw your eyes to places you may not see if your perspective is from the character's eyes. Now, as you can see, as I move forward past past this picture, the camera will shift facing this clock. Subconsciously, this will tell you this clock must be important because, because the camera is pointed at it. Now, if we move forward, as you can see, this image alone tells a lot of stories. You can see the broken, gra broken glass on the table there. You can see the chandelier above and also the first floor. It can give you a hint that you may be going there soon. It's amazing how changing a camera angle can tell so much within one scene. In this angle, you've got the door over there. You've got the save typewriter here. If you move forward. Again, the camera is placed, it's pulled and stretched back. It's placed to give you the impression you have a long way to travel still. And there's a pot to the right. And if you click the action button, the text will appear and this you get the interest to click the pot because the camera is placed so that your eyes will be attracted towards it. Okay, there's another example I'd like to show you. This is my second example. From this shot alone you can see the reflections on the floor. And as you just saw then the storm outside, you can 
The camera was placed so you can see the storm outside coming through the gaps in the walls. If we move forward, camera changes to the side angle, showing the, the, the door over there. If we move forward again, the candles are there on the left. It gives you a, a sense of scale, I feel, that You've moved 20 feet forward, but the way the camera is positioned, it, it feels like you've, you've made a further distance because of how far, far away you are from the camera. If we move over to the door, it's still, the camera still stays and your character is further away. In a first person game, or a third person game, the camera is always following you, so if with the character moving forwards here, the camera stands still, it makes you feel the place can be larger than it actually is. Another cool example I like is the stairs here. Yeah? Camera shifts to a low angle, facing up, it gives you a feeling somehow this picture is important and also how high the stairs can be because the camera is placed so low. If we go back down into this corner, again the camera changes to the opposite side of the room, placed on the opposite side so it gives you a sense of scale to how far away you are and it also shows the graphic quality of the game with the reflection below Jill. It's a nice camera trick to subconsciously show off how good looking your game is because in first person and third person games you can move the camera close to a wall and see how low res the textures are and as you just saw there the shadows appearing upon the wall there from the lightning outside. It can only be achieved through these fixed camera angles, the brilliant artistic vision that developers would like to show. And the camera here, you have the door on the left which your eyes will be attracted to and you also have this corridor down here on the right side so you have two directions you would like to go. If you go down, the camera is placed above, looking down, it can give you a sense of closure because you feel trapped inside the square panel. With a first person game, I could look this way and feel safe because I can see the exit. Or I could look down here and see if there's any surprises ahead. But with this camera angle, it gives you a sense of closure. If we travel down now, the camera is still placed above, above there. So right now I'm walking into mystery land. I don't know what can be ahead. And I think this is important for survival horror, not knowing what's ahead. But, as you can see, the Jill shadow on the left, on the wall there. And then you have the lights over here. Only possible through this camera angle can you create such a cinematic effect. And if we travel up these stairs, as you can see, this camera angle is pointing towards this direction. It makes you feel like you want to escape this little area and go back out into the open. Again, similar effect. We've got the entrance to where we were on the left. And on the right, we've got two doors. I'd like to show you one final example. Okay, I think this camera angle is very effective. As you can tell, you have that door over there. We have the statue here, 
But if you look above, something's flashing. Your eyes are immediately drawn towards it. Also, this statue here is actually covering a door here, which you wouldn't have seen had you not explored this direction. So what I'm saying is, the fixed camera angle here can actually be initiative to explore further. Because if I was in first or third person over here and looked, I could see the door over there and the door over there immediately. But because the camera is facing Jill, there's a sense of, there's an aura of mystery that makes you want to push forwards. And when you do, you immediately show the statue covering the door. However, if you move back again, they're still flashing above there on the statue. I think these fixed camera angles can provide stories of their own, create tension and mystery that first and third person games simply cannot offer. Because if I'm facing this direction, a zombie can come towards me in this direction. But you wouldn't know because the camera is facing you, so it can create a good jump scare moment. And also, as you just saw, you can exploit the game if you stand normally and then hold the stance button, the camera changes. You can position yourself so that this happens. I think it's a cool little effect that has been lost in survival horror recently. And I'd love to see more survival horror games use these fixed camera angles more. And that's my video, hope you enjoyed.